gates it was time to steal from the dead and net monet all play only two of them knew her um all right so so far in class we've talked about sequential panels and we talk about leaving a little space between those panels to help tell a story. We have done things like foreshortening, you know, hand coming up close, looking bigger, right? Um, we've done things like bird's eye and worm's eye view. This technically is, even though a limited, that's a bird's eye view. This like that would be a worm's eye view because you're looking up at the ceiling. Sorry, I always wanted to do that. See how far that computer could go. Um, so we learned a bunch of different things, silhouettes last semester. Now we're gonna learn something that is gonna be relatively simple to understand, but it helps the pacing of the story. And that thing is a subtractive panel. Now, what does a subtractive panel mean? Well, let me see if this is in the right spot at the right place. And we can go right to a subtractive panel. Boom. All right. What is that a picture of? It's a dog. It's a dog nose. So this might be a way to open a scene if somebody's been passed out or was knocked out or you know, woke up in a bad morning with a dog snotting all over him. What a, a subtractive shot is, is usually a super close up. And you do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't want to ever in a comic book, just draw everything at the same distance. If you ever watch movies, there's all kinds of subtractive shots or super close ups. They're really called subtractive shots, but for a lot of people, the word super close up works better. They just feel better about calling it that because that makes more sense to them. So if somebody's waking up from a bad night, boom, the dog is the first one to greet them. You pan back, there's dog tongue all over their face. You pan back to the next panel and he's pushing his dog off of them. And the dog's going, yip, 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 take me for a walk. Um, that's how you can set a scene, all right? Other things, you can do the, the lighting of a candle. Maybe it's in a church and somebody is praying, or maybe it's a romantic evening and somebody's lighting candles to set the mood, or maybe there's a scary witch's ceremony going on. There's all kinds of things that subtractive shot. Now, the most important thing to remember about a subtractive shot is you don't always have to show everything. Like even when we look, went back to this dog, ah, that's about 80% nose, <laughs> right? You knew enough, you recognized enough of that dog, that it was a dog to go, it's a dog. But that's, it's kind of a in your face. That's what a, a subtractive panel is. So if we go back here, we see a phone. A lot of times people, use older well-known symbols of objects to represent that object does either one of you have a phone like that in your house either one of you got a dial phone at home All right. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it doesn't work. It worked for a while. You could still get calls coming in. But the reason I have is because my grandfather had it. And where you see this Bakelite black, he had used the phone since like 1945. This black light hand grip was worn off. So it was white underneath. It takes a lot to wear off that black. But here's why people use that phone. Nobody has one. You guys probably grew up never having to use one. But we see it as a simple symbol 
for what a phone is. So a lot of times subtractive shots take the easiest, most common of that object to show what they're trying to get across. That phone could be ringing. Somebody would pick it up. We probably wouldn't even question the fact it's a dial phone in the context of the story. All right, other subtractive shots. Build tension. You know, we see here the super close up of the eye. That's subtractive of the eye. There's a face, there's a body. If that was a skeleton, the scene would suddenly become creepier. This one here of the smile. That's a fairly frightening smile. <laughs> so, you know, depending on the outcome of your story, you might want to, uh, you know, if somebody's just smiling pleasantly, you may not want to draw it like that. Uh, all right, other well-known subtractive shots. Fists. You're going to have a sound effect in the panel after it, a bam, a smack, or whatever. Depends how much time you want to put between that fist and whatever it's supposed to be doing. You see this in movies all the time, close up on the hand doing something. You also see in movies all the time, gun barrels. You know, here's the threatening gun. No hand, just so close, you're looking at a barrel. Here's the hand holding the gun, still nothing. Here's the gun being discharged. So any of these might play out in your story, but it doesn't have to be a gun. It could be a sword. It could be an arrow point. Right. Here we have somebody writing. Here we have somebody being shaved. All right, old school shaving, like in the gangster movies. Once again, my grandfather used a straight razor up to 101 years old. Um, I have his straight razors. They scare me. I would never use them. But man, are they sharp. All right, other subtractive ones. People running. The feet. Let me get rid of that real quick. Here is how subtractive works out within a page of panels. All right. So we have a far shot. The narrative box says most of us gave up on a long time ago. We go down to a subtractive shot. She has some kind of tattoo on her wrist. But a few of us find a reason to try. Then we have a face shot. Then we have a super, uh, super subtractive where it's just part of the cell phone. Right. Out of four panels, two of them are subtractive. Not only does that help this flow of the story, but it makes it easier for the artist to draw those panels because they don't have to do full bodies, worry about proportion. They just have to draw part of the thing that they're trying to show. Um, this one's a beautiful layout, starting with a subtractive shot of the goggles. You see somebody has wiped the dust from them. Another semi-subtractive shot of the costume that the goggles are on. So we're getting a pan back and either farther pan back, there's dust on her fingers. She walks across the garage or the secret lair for that matter. We see a, a partial silhouette here. We see her walk up to this flying machine. She wipes the dust from the window of the flying machine she gets in. This subtractive mimics what she's doing here with the dust. The big overall symbolism is that she's clearing that which isn't important so that the character, the main character can see because he gave up being this hero a long time ago. This is an absolutely brilliant book. It's called The Watchmen. Um, the main book is probably the best front to end story. Second best, if, if, I, if you wanted me to argue about it, 
in the history of comics. The symbolism in there is amazing. The paneling's amazing. Uh, so much better than the movie. The movie took a hard turn. And it was pretty good. I mean, the movie was pretty good. It had flaws, but up right at the end, it just completely fell apart and ignored the story. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of a couple of more. All right. All right. So we see part of a building, part of a city. This becomes your establishing shot, which we talked about last week. Um, here we have our silhouette. All right. Here we have a subtractive part of an arm looking at a button. We have almost a partial silhouette of the character. We have a bird's eye view. All these things that we've covered in class. Subtractive again here with his uh, grappling gun just coming out of his coat. How that fit in that coat, I got no idea. That thing is huge. Um, bird's eye view. Kind of a subtractive shot, then a long shot. Here we have the establishing shot. We have back view of the character. We have a subtractive of the uh, stereo. We have the flower. We have the two characters. This is subtractive, a cigar smoldering on the stand. Two faces basically counting as subtractive. Lip subtractive, phone subtractive, two faces, gun subtractive. Most of that entire page is subtractive. All right, cool. So I'm going to stop my share there, and I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do. I'm going to have you set up three panels. You are going to do three separate subtractive shots. All right. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw probably about, I don't know, is that four inch, four and a half inch distance between here. And I start off with my one panel. Now, if this was an establishing shot, I might take up that whole panel, but I'm gonna have three subtractive shots. So what I'm gonna do, and you can eyeball this, but I'm gonna break this panel into three pieces. Now, of all the stuff that has been um, sent in, I may have to throw this phone over here. Of all the stuff that has been sent in for grading, um, I've had to tell people that in the future, you have to put a space between your panels. The reason you need a space between your panels is that it helps the flow of you reading. A single line really is just kind of awkward. So. Here we go. We've got three panels now. Now you can eyeball this, you can measure it. Um, I usually leave about a little less than a quarter inch in between panels when, when I'm doing them. So you can measure it if you want, but you don't have to. Um, what am I gonna do? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a subtractive of a person's head. All right. You are free to do whatever kind of subtractive shots you want to. And they don't have to go together as part of a story, but Oops, sorry, I thought out that ear wrong. Should be up higher on the head. Then all I have to do is go back. All 
and shade in. And at this moment, my feathering is a little bit questionable. I am going to blame that pencil because there seems to be something stuck in the graphite that is not allowing me to go smoothly. Yeah, this one's much better. So basically my subtractive is, in this frame, is a bird's eye of a dude with a hat, probably a top hat, and his eyes looking at something important. Sometimes I wish I could speed draw, not for stuff that I care about, but just so I look like one of those videos without having to put on the fast forward effect. All right, now there might be, because of the light source, there might be some shadowing here on his face. What kind of thing? Pupils, eyes, eyebrows. All right. Now, I could do anything with the other two, right? I could do the candle. I could do somebody grabbing a toy. I could probably do a finger. I'm about to press a doorbell. See, these subtractive shots don't have to be all that complicated at all. All right. Boom, boom. What am I going to do with this doorbell? Well, remember when we practiced our shading? We said that a hard edge cuts the flow of light. So one side of this doorbell is going to be darker here. One side of this doorbell is going to be darker here. Probably would take that to this edge. Give this some thickness. And I'm doing this really, really crazy fast. You don't have to, definitely don't have to do it this fast. So, so far, my drawing has a subtractive of a head, a subtractive of a finger pushing a button. And just maybe I'm also going to do and this might be a little harder to understand. Now her hand would probably come from this side. See, would that be right? Whenever you're drawing hands, ah, uh, why do I have no erasers? Whenever you're drawing hands, remember, if it, they start to confuse you, you have two hand models on the end of each one of your wrists. Da, 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 da. All 
right. So I would probably make that as dark as humanly possible. If I'm finishing this up, I would use this cut to make this area a little lighter. All right. Maybe I would shade some of this hand. Underside of the fingers. Nails. All right. Pattern in the door. I don't know if they've got a four square in their door or not. I don't know if they have a window in the door or not. All right. All right. So like in under, I don't know, was that 10 minutes? I knocked out three subtractive panels. Mine kind of relate to each other. He's looking down, he's pressing a button, the door opens. Yours do not have to. I just want you to get used to drawing subtractive panels, whether it's somebody pressing a cell phone, putting a worm on a hook because they're going fishing. Three shots, nice and close. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Nope. All right then you guys can get busy.